colour of flowers. I'm going to start with some of the tulips which are beginning to look really quite interesting. I usually like to pick them and leave them in the studio for a little while and then they take on uh, their own shapes and the stems carve and the flowers open out and they're, they're much more interesting than when they're first stuck into a vase. I don't plan out. I have an, an idea in my head, but the, the idea may change in the course of the painting. Once you start with an image on the white paper, uh, that really dictates in a way what's going to happen next. I really like to be surprised at the end anyway. I don't like to be, it to be too predictable. I, I think it becomes boring then. I was thinking too of, of perhaps mixing the variety of the, the flowers on this painting. I hope to draw with the, the paint brush more than uh, doing a detailed drawing beforehand. It doesn't always work out like that. I do tend to have a, um, I know where the colours are, I set them out, sort of grouping some of the colours together. Um, I suppose I use really quite a, a big range of colour when colours, when you think about it. Especially for painting flowers, it's, uh, I, I had to do a commission in painting orchids in Malaysia and they were all kind of pink and magenta <laughs> and it was quite a problem getting uh, these kind of colours. When I'm painting flowers like this, I use a fairly smooth, hard surface paper, yeah, quite a heavy paper, and the, the paint tends to, to lie on top of the paper. It's not an absorbent paper. It, it can give you a greater detail and a, a sharper edge. If I was painting a water, um, still life, I might use a very um, soft, absorbent paper and let the, the paint flood out. Well, my interest in, in flowers and plants started a long time ago. I was really um, very interested in, in botany and, uh, and in wildflowers. I didn't like garden flowers at all. And uh, drew them just out of interest to, to find out what they were like, how they were uh, put together and so on. And then I started looking at botanical illustration. And although though I could never become a, a botanical illustrator, I, I wouldn't have the patience or the, the knowledge to do it. I'm fascinated by some of the botanical paintings, by some of the people like Eret and uh, Bauer Brothers, not only because of they're so scientifically correct, but also they're, they're really seen as, uh, as a, an artist with the way the the, the placing, the composition on the, on the paper. I, I'm fascinated by irises, um, and I started growing them as many different kinds as I can possibly find. Um, I think I realised that I really like flowers that have quite a, a, a strong s structure to them. And uh, I think the iris has, although there's so many varieties of them, and it's uh, also the texture of the leaves, the petals, 
um, with the light shining through. It's almost impossible to get it in paint, but it's always a challenge to try. You never quite manage it. So keep on doing it. I've always used watercolour um, ever since I was a student because uh, watercolour is has been used a lot by in Scottish painting for some reason or other. I know sometimes people um, consider watercolour to be perhaps not such a, a serious medium as uh, oil paint, uh, but it, I find it, it just depends what you want to do what what your idea in the painting is and and uh, to try and suit what medium is going to suit that be uh, best And now I'd like to go on to some of the other flowers and see how the whole uh, painting is going to build up as, as a, a design. I'm looking at, um, I suppose, quite a lot of different things. Um, the drawing is quite important to me, that I, I get the character of the individual uh, plant or flower. Um, and also to try and get something of the, the three-dimensional quality of the flower so that it's not just a flat pattern. I use quite a, a variety of brushes too. Um, quite, I quite like using some fairly uh, large brushes so that you can get a really, uh, you know, full um, paint, amount of paint on them. Um, and the trouble is if you use very small brushes, you tend to get too, too finicky and too de detailed. And you need something with a fairly uh, fine point as well. There's, it's, it really is, once you start <laughs> looking at, at, at a flower like the tulip, it, it's really very complicated. It's, it's got a totally different kind of texture to the petal say, um, from the iris. It's got a, a shine, some of them are quite shiny and reflective. Um, and the edges of the, the petals, too, some are slightly a broken edge, or the twist and the turn. And then one colour blends into another and fades off. Um, you can't hope to get the whole feeling of it, I think. Some idea of it. To me, drawing is uh, really very important. I suppose it's just part of the, the training that I had, that um, a great deal of emphasis was put on, on drawing. But if I was going to do a drawing, then I might leave it just as a drawing. Uh, but I don't want the drawing, in this case, to interfere too much with what goes on top. Um, in, I draw with a, a fairly, usually with a, quite a soft pencil, and like a soluble pencil. 
so that the lines disappear, hopefully. <laughs> it's uh, mainly cadmium red deep. I, and, and I paint, when I'm painting flowers, it's mostly in watercolour uh, because you, you get the, the uh, luminosity of the white paper coming through the paint. But just recently, in the last, last year, I, I went back to painting quite a lot of still lives with flowers, but in oil paint, which I, I quite like doing. Here I'm just deciding uh, how this tulip is going to work with the iris and where to put in another flower head. Uh, really, the paintings are built up in that way. I don't have a kind of uh, preconceived plan of where everything is going to go. I, I do like painting them uh, to the almost to the exact size. I don't know why. Uh, but also, of course, the, the, the bigger the scale, the, the more detail and uh, you can get into them. And also, just using the watercolour and letting it run onto the paper. I, I used to sometimes even dampen the paper and then paint onto it before it had really properly dried. Um, I don't do that so much, but I do paint wet into wet quite often, especially when you're trying to get this effect of the uh, stripes and the, and the tulip. So that the colours blend and have the the edges become a little bit um, softer. Sometimes I, I do paint in backgrounds or even paint, um, introduce other um, objects, uh, not so they're not, it's not just flowers, but it might be a, a kind of mixture of still life objects and, and uh, flowers. Um, I quite like the flower just against the pale back, the white background, I must say. Uh, sometimes they look a little bit stark and I might put a, a very light wash of a, a rather neutral colour, um, just in some ways also to connect up the, the actual flower heads um, and also perhaps give some idea of the the surface where the, if, if I put in jugs, give idea, some idea of the, uh, the table surface. Leave it at that for a little while, I think. <laughs> This is a lily flowering tulip. Um, very pretty, very delicate, very pointed uh, petals. And quite unusual colours too. That purple uh, almost magenta purple colour. It's just by mixing um, different. I've used Windsor violet and um, a touch of it because it's really quite a red violet that. So I must have put some 
um, perhaps magenta or some colour like that into it. There's a much bigger range of colours now available uh, than there used to be, uh, especially in these odd colours like um, rose or magenta, and they're also more permanent. Sometimes I like just to have the flowers placed on the paper and a pure white background, um, so it's really quite stark. Um, other times um, I've got such a range of old jugs and dishes and so on. Um, and some were actually given to me by other painters. I've got one that belonged to Anne Redpath. I think that little one may well be a Gillis uh, vase. So it's quite nice to feel that somebody else has used them. <laughs> Well, I'd really quite like to paint that one because it might not last all that much longer. Um, I mean, what is already there now begins to dictate what's going to develop yeah. from that. I'll start on the right-hand side and move that way. So. Um, but it's, it's just so nice at the moment that uh, I'm frightened I lose it. I tend to switch around really quite a lot across the, the paper. It, it's a fairly big piece of um, watercolour paper and I think I'm just uh, seeing how I can roughly plan out and see what happens. So rather than, you know, complete one end or something, I, I, I like to sort of move around on the paper. The quite odd things that happen, you find that maybe a petal is, one half of it is red, a straight line in the other half is yellow, it's really fascinating. They're not quite, it's not quite black too, it's quite often it's got a uh, bluey, it's a bluey black. Um, I usually, when I'm using black for any of these, um, in the centre of the, the tulips, I usually mix some other colour in to the black. Oh, you, you get a lot of different varieties of black anyway.
you get the warm black or a very cold black or a soft, soft black. I can use that now because I want to let that dry off. But I've got the, the basic structure of it, so it should be okay. Um, of course, they've all changed again, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, sometimes paint the same flower several times because it takes up different shapes and it's yeah. quite interesting. Mm -hmm. And so, I uh, also got to think perhaps if I put in some foreground here so that uh, some of the things are resting on a table or something uh, and not just all of them floating on the white background. Uh, but they usually don't do that until the end, anyway. Uh, I think it might be quite nice, too, to change, change the scale of some of the, the flowers. That's why um, I was thinking last night, too, uh, that some small things against all these big, rather blousy looking uh, tulip heads uh, and just come down and scale. Sometimes I do pages of just one type of flower, you know, in a sort of perhaps more kind of botanical study, but um, in this one I think I'll have a variety of different things in it. Now. <laughs> I mean, some irises are quite scented, and this one, uh, in particular, is it's supposed to uh, smell of green gauges. <laughs> that, that iris is called Graminiae. I think somebody gave me it, uh, a rush of it, and it's really um, increased quite well. The, the tulip, the big tulips, uh, tend to be fairly similar in size, and even the, the big purple iris on the right-hand side. And I thought it would be quite nice to introduce something very different in scale. I, I like the, the shape of it and the shape of the, the bud that I'm um, just painting just now. And then it, it opens out really quite quite quickly. It's quite um, detailed, the sort of veining on the, the petals. Uh, it, it's quite tricky to get it. <laughs> it's, it's the size of it. I keep thinking it would be nice to go and work on a six by six canvas. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I really like working between the two. But, uh, there's really such a variety within the iris group, both in the flowers and the shape, shapes of leaves and so on. The trouble is, once you start painting something, uh, you have an idea. But as the painting goes on, you get a lot more ideas, things that suggest through the painting and through just looking at things. 
sometimes too many ideas, you can't uh, get them all down. Uh, the spaces in between the, the flowers or the objects um, are very important to me uh, in the composition. In fact, they're almost as important as the objects themselves. So this is why I kind of make it, <laughs> trying to keep it still, but I've got the right kind of uh, distances and they're making an interesting shape themselves. This painting, I feel, has sort of come to a stage where I quite like to leave it. I, I like having the paintings around and I think about them and then come back with a fresh eye. But I don't want to sort of push it on too much at the moment. So this, this is the finished painting now with quite a few additions. And I've also put in some different jugs and hinted at the, the background just I don't, didn't want to make it too strong I, I really wanted the flowers to be the uh, most important thing in the painting um, sometimes the using the jugs gives you a slightly different uh, shape and a different kind of interest in the, uh, in the painting uh, after I've been painting in watercolor for some time it's a nice change to go into the oil studio and start with a big brush sh sloshing around with oil paint on a canvas. Also, I do like to have various things going on at the same time so I can move around and come back to one and, um, as, the, as the kind of mood takes me. With this when I'm starting off, I've just got a rough sketch of the thing. I don't, know, I don't actually know what this building is. It's in Bologna, in the main square. Uh, I think it's one of the town offices. It's obviously quite an old building, and it's been, it's quite interesting. All buildings are brick, um, a kind of browny brick. Uh, and these curious kind of battlements, uh, which really kind of... Uh, the kind of menace about them in a way. And also there's one or two very, very tall towers who are obviously the sort of lookout posts that some of them are kind of leaning in different directions. I'm really just interested in the, the facades and the, uh, the sort of pattern of the brickwork and the, the windows and so on. This bit of the building here looks of just bits have been added and added and added and, and a sort of jumble. Like they're, they're quite interesting shapes in there. A, a lot of the buildings do look like fortresses, uh, great brick facades, and then this sort of battlement on top. I usually work from um, sketches. Um, they're really very personal kind of sketches. Uh, they're not in any way finished drawings, and I don't really show them at all. They're really they're things from uh, my information. Um, the kind of things I, I I need if I'm going to work on a bigger scale. I, I suppose I've got sort of accustomed to some kind of shorthand, um, either in the drawing or, or writing down notes beside it. And also trying to remember what it was that particularly uh, struck me about whatever it is. The painting, the painting I'm doing now has an oil ground on it. Um, I sometimes used to just paint straight onto the canvas, but I, I don't, I like, um, as I said, I like a fine, fairly fine canvas and an oil ground. And then, as I'm doing here, I'm painting very thinly and, and wiping off and using tops and so on. Well, it's a mixture of 
cadmium red and cadmium scarlet. I, I don't want to be too literal about it, you know. And I've got uh, some photographs, but I might refer to them, see, for some of the, the drawing, but uh, it, it, it's difficult using photographs, really, because you, f you find uh, you tend to try and maybe copy too much, and I don't want that at all. Um, there's too, and also there's too much. Um, I want to eliminate a lot of stuff anyway. Um, and you're inclined to um, see too much in the photograph. I usually work, on, if I'm doing a, an oil painting, I, I try to lay it in over the whole um, area and almost to get rid of some of the white canvas as well. Um, it, it's only then that you can see the whole whole thing. But this is just trying to find what I want. Even though I really noted down in the sketch what kind of colour and so on. When you go up in scale, things are going to change. Some of the tones of the tower against the sky, and uh, oh, I want to make a difference between this bit and this one. Um, I think I'll keep the sky fairly light. Uh, yeah, the battlements, the, quite a lot of the buildings had these kind of quite tall uh, shapes. There. I don't know why. And then the towers at, um, in the background, the one, the very tall, thin ones that all look lying at a slight angle. I think it was really the uh, facade of this building that um, first attracted me to the uh, subject. The, the texture of the brickwork and the, uh, these funny little iron bars going across the front of it. I found when I was painting this particular um, subject, the paint was very wet and it gets it quite often gets to a stage where you want to leave it to, just to dry. And then when I was thinking about the subject, I, I thought of um, different designs using the buildings. So I went, went on to a, a series of quite small paintings where I could try out um, different compositions and, and uh, where I used different colours, uh, different emphasis on, on the buildings. Uh, and that, that was quite fun. And then I came back to, the, to this painting, the first one, and finished it. And it, it has changed really quite a lot uh, since the first uh, day or so. I find that um, in the course of the painting, you know, a lot more ideas are generated when, when you're actually doing the painting. Um, and that's why I sometimes do go on and do variations. So it's, it's become a kind of series which I never really intended it to. You know, I think it's very much part of the rest of the work, really, the way you look at still life and, and uh, the, the buildings. Uh, I'm not particularly interested in, you know, making them look uh, too realistic or anything. It's uh, an idea of the design, I think. And with this one, it was really the, just this simple shape of it. I, I think, like a lot of painters, we're all very conscious of, you know, other paintings and other cultures. And probably from my history of art, you know, I became interested in, in different uh, forms and so on. And, and Chinese and Japanese art 
had always been something that I was very conscious of. Also, when my husband and I went to America and seeing some of the Oriental art, in, particularly in the Thea Gallery in Washington, things I'd never really seen before. And in Chicago, in the Chicago Institute, Japanese screens and Japanese furniture and so on. And I think that made me even more aware of it and I became much more interested. We both wanted to go to Japan. I think the first trip was maybe 84, 85, something like that. I, I found it uh, very rewarding. It wasn't a sudden sort of influence on my work. I think the influence was there from what I had seen in books and, and in exhibitions. Uh, but it became much stronger when I saw, actually saw the things. I've always, again, like a lot of painters, you know, <laughs> Uh, we tend to be like sort of magpies who collect uh, what is called source material. So I collect everything. Okay, I'm not a, a collector of valuable objects at all. They're really things that visually uh, I like or I think that I would like to paint them or they have some kind of connection for me. But so that when I came back from Japan, I really brought quite a lot of material with me. and. As well as being objects, nice objects to, for me, at least I think they're interesting objects, they also have a kind of recollection of a place and a time. And, and this is something that um, you know, I try to get across in the paintings. I've been using this sort of format of a long scroll shape. Um, I suppose, again, this is sort of Japanese influence uh, and seeing some of the things in the, <coughs> especially in the National Museum in Tokyo, the most beautiful scrolls where you actually move, as you move along and sort of read the painting, you don't take it all in at once. And I quite like that sense of, of moving across a painting. It's, it's quite nice to come back and look at something uh, with fresh eyes, but it also takes a little while just to get into the, the feeling or the mood of the painting. So probably to start with it would be, you know, I'll go kind of uh, gently and, uh, until I, I, I sort of feel where I'm going more again. Sometimes I, s I stick fairly closely to the object and other times I sort of take off from it and become something different I just uh, see how it goes. This is just a little toy. Sort of, uh, it's a model of a, a, a mask from a, a no play. Uh, it's, uh, you see quite a lot of them in Japan. They're quite lovely things. I experiment a lot with the Japanese or Chinese or, or Indian handmade paper. Um, it becomes so much part of the painting because um, the surface varies so much. There may be pieces of texture, quite sometimes quite strong texture, in the painting, which almost becomes part of the painting itself. Um, also, the some are very transparent papers, and others are very soft, absorbent papers. Um, so they really affect the way that you're going to paint. But I've been using that paper for quite a long time now. I didn't want very much strong colour in this, but this will disappear, some of it anyway. It will be covered up, but I want a, a colour underneath because it gives a, a quality to the, the leaf. It's black or it's a, a warm colour like red. I see quite a close connection between these different kinds of painting, really. My mind is sort of working in the same way very much in terms of the balance that I'm trying to create, the way I'm trying to um, lead uh, the, the, you know, whoever's looking at the painting to lead them through the painting, whether I'm painting flowers or painting sort of semi-abstract forms, uh, I'm tr using colour uh, to, to create some kind of particular mood. Uh, perhaps less so in the flower paintings where 
colours kind of dictated. But I, I don't see it's a, almost a different person painting uh, these paintings at all. I think my concern is really with this kind of uh, visual language in, in all of them. It's very thick ink, so you can dilute. I think I've had too much water in this. I don't really want it. It's fairly dense, rich black. Some of them are, uh, you know, based on objects. Others are using just as a kind of link, maybe between. Also, as well as the shapes, as I said about the flowers, the, uh, the spaces, um, the blank spaces, are very important to me. Uh, so I'm always trying to consider them as well as, you know, what I'm actually painting. Um, you know, is that area? Right. Does it need something else, or does it need a different scale? Um, uh, and I was using that because I felt that some of them were uh, very over here were very geometric sort of shapes, rectangles and squares and so on. So I thought I wanted something a bit looser, uh, so they're not all too static. Um, Little shapes like uh, shells uh, and lacquered inside, and they're really for holding your chopsticks. <laughs> they're very pretty, uh, quite not too regular in shape. Some of these may become ink sticks like this. They're little brass weights to put down when you open out a scroll to keep the thing open. And they're really quite pretty. So that's what this is. Also, it just rakes up these, again, these rectangular shapes. But the things are connected, I just like this, the simplicity of. of the way of making things, of making ordinary utensils like uh, uh, spoons for mixing, or for cooking utensils, and you mix them and thought, what a good idea, it's just so simple. Um, and I think that's why I started collecting so many things. I just like the look and the feel of them too, the material they're made of. Seems such an odd idea to make a plate in that shape, isn't it? And yet it's, it's so nice and so asymmetric, which I kind of like. I think it's a bit too heavy. This is where I probably go and walk around and look at all my <laughs> things. <laughs> and sometimes you, you just you're wondering well, what goes next. And think, ah, the ideal object, and you can remember it. Uh, in bigger areas, I'll apply uh, gold leaf on top of some of these, the blacks particularly. Uh, but I can't do that really until it's uh, stretched onto a, a rigid background um, piece of board. So that really has to wait until the end. So I don't really see the, the whole effect until um, when it, it, it's just almost finished. I, I don't think I want to do uh, much more to it at the moment. It, it has, you can look at it in, in lots of different ways, I think. Um, 
is a personal thing to me, obviously, because all these shapes and objects have a, a special relationship which I'm familiar with. Somebody else looking at them won't read that into them, but then to me that doesn't matter. Um, and, and another way, another way of looking at it is um, a sequence, almost like a, a passage in music, where you get uh, quiet passages, busy passages, or you know, you, you um, change the pace of reading the thing. And uh, also, I'm trying to create a mood that, uh, again, is probably um, it's a personal thing. Somebody else may see the same thing, which is, you know, good. Somebody may see something else or not see anything at all. And think, you know. it, uh, it's, it's not all that different from the way I'm painting the flowers, although I'm, you know, not at least composing with the flowers. But, uh, I suppose I have to be more specific. I find it very difficult with the flowers to be completely free, I think. It's very easy to get caught up with almost too much detail, see too much. I saw this fantastic gladioli uh, in the garden. I just, you know, I hadn't seen it before and it just, very, very dark purple gladiola. I have to paint it because it's the only one I have. I've painted it very quickly. I suppose with the oil painting, I, I really I'm uh, painting it slightly different way because I'm also trying to uh, paint in some kind of background and not just isolating the flowers as I, I tend to do more in watercolour. But this, uh, you really have to integrate them more into the uh, surrounding areas. And, I think it would look odd if you just painted on to white now. I don't know why. Actually, you almost need to use a little white in oil paint. Sometimes the paint can crack. You can use white in, in watercolour too, but it, I don't really like doing it very much because uh, you lose the kind of... Um, some of the liveliness of the colour in water, watercolour if you put white into it. Um, I used to use quite a lot of white, so it became almost a kind of gouache. Uh, but now I prefer to use it just as pure colour. I think the first flowers I painted were in oil. Um, it was a very early one outside, actually. But uh, and every now and again I, I do an oil painting, uh, but they're very uh, not nearly so frequent as uh, the watercolour ones. When I really started uh, painting flowers a lot, um, which was in the late 70s, I think, um, they were nearly all watercolour.
Although I'm painting much more in a much more detailed way than say and I'm painting the building. You know, and I'm really sloshing the paint around. Well, I'm just trying to get the drawing for the individual flowers. Mixture, I think of uh, again, it might be Windsor violet. Um, again, I'd probably put a little red uh, into it. You can move it around a good bit more than watercolour. Oh, then you can do a uh, scrap of watercolour around too. It tends to look, get a bit tired though if you do that. Oh, well, oil paints so it stands up a lot more to be pushed around. With this painting, um, what started me off was just finding this fantastic um, flower, this dark purple gladioli in the garden one evening. And I, I just felt I had to paint it, and as it was the only one, I had to paint it quite quickly. And one or, one or two other flowers round about, like the um, the cosmos and the, uh, the cornflower. Uh, I thought that you know I'd get something out of these, put them together. But I hadn't really planned it out very much at all. I was so anxious to get it onto the canvas and get the flowers painted that I was just hoping that somehow or other <laughs> I'd find. Um, something perhaps that would go in the background. Uh, I wanted to make the flowers the most important thing in the painting. So even the background had to be fairly secondary to that. I didn't want it too strong. Or, um, and then I think later that evening I saw a dish of fruit in the dining room and I thought perhaps I could use that. I, I'm not sure, but I just saw them um, last night, and I thought something. I need something going across. I don't know if that's the right thing. It's a little um, a common name, is Japanese toad lily. Quite a small flower, quite pretty, and it comes out late in the summer. A little spotted lily.
I have an idea of what I want. Sometimes it's quite a clear idea. Uh, other times, that, you know, just start off. And, um, but I, I don't want to plan it out too much and have it. Uh, and I, I find it's too restricted in a way. Uh, I, I prefer just letting them grow themselves. I think that was a kind of little addition of the little flower that was lying just by chance and I thought that was quite interesting. Just washing in with some with a rag and some little paint and chops on it. And spreading it over on the surface to get rid of some of these white, the big ears of white anyway. Now that I, I've managed, I think, to get the idea of the flowers and, and the sort of design of the flowers where I want them, I leave it and consider just how important these other um, areas are, like the, where I suggested the dish of, of fruit. That's the finished uh, painting, and I've got this dark shape on the left-hand side. And there's a little glass pier where the fruit dish was. There's more depth in the background now, I think, in the sense of space going behind the dish. I, I enjoy painting different subjects, but I don't see them as different. I mean, to the, the someone looking at the painting, I think, oh, gosh, uh, she paints on lots of different things. To me, they're not. Uh, the paintings, and I'm looking for the same kind of solutions or exploring this visual language through them. <laughs> 